heartiest welcome nimrat kaur and thank you so much for joining me on e times first and foremost i must tell you that you have done very well in dasri of course you know that the response has been very good and uh, how are you feeling about it i mean we have seen very little of you in the recent past if i can say that so how does this response make you feel thank you thank you so much it's been it's been a long time and it's very nice to uh, be chatting again with you so thank you very much uh it, it's wonderful you know actually uh, and also because of like two years of lockdown and the world was the, the way it was it's really nice to kind of come back with a film with the gap that i ended up you know unintentionally of course taking and then jo do saal you know the two years the way they were uh, it's really nice to come back with a film which uh, has been loved and accepted so widely it's been watched uh, so widely i get messages my family is constantly getting messages um i it's really really nice it's the warmest feeling for any actor to know that you know your work has been loved and appreciated and the film is being loved so much so it's god's grace really you have been really very good in that there is no doubt about it you also wrote a very important message on body positivity uh, so right. film but uh, before i go to that i must ask you one more question yeah. uh, absence of yours you know after 2016 we have seen very little of you very little like yeah. i i never expected so little i yeah. really meeting you for interviews i mean of course when your projects were around the corner so yeah yeah let's do that you know actually vicky uh 2016 i was after <laughs> i had gone to british columbia to shoot a show there which took about 5 or 6 months to film mm-hmm. and then i came back and i had signed the test case immediately uh for which i needed to prepare physically a little bit so that plus you know the show filming and finally with it coming out uh that took a little bit of time and then i went again to do uh homeland season 2 mm. mm. and then i did not work on anything during the lockdown so both the lockdowns basically no the second one is when i worked on the swing and then the swing happened so what has happened is that uh because w- one ends up taking so much time when you are working abroad you get taken away for a very long period of time and then when you come back it's not like something is waiting for you to you know start right away that's that's maybe you know partly because i did not plan it in a way that you know that could happen um but i have also assessed where i can make things right so that these gaps don't become so long because honestly it's painful and i would love to be you know much more present on the scene and i don't like being absent you know when i love working in india so much and it's my mother tongue and it's my emotion and this is what i've grown up on um so it's not no fun for me to be gone for this long you know so many times i have found myself wondering and waiting that you know i'll quickly get into something and that hasn't happened as quickly and swiftly as i would have liked it to and then there were one or two projects that i thought they were going to happen but they didn't happen and you know they kind of got shelved and all of that happened so i think it's a combination of a few things but here on i'm very sure that uh, this is the last time you'll have this conversation with me <laughs> so uh, it will rectify itself because i i just finished something overseas i finished um uh, foundation season 2 for apple tv and i'm back here and i'm getting into a web series um uh, right you know in the next coming week or so so yeah it was very nice to hear you saying that i don't like being absent from the scene No, no, absolutely. I don't think anybody likes that. I, I don't think anybody likes that. You know, you you want to stay relevant. You want to be uh, uh, in in people's minds and conversations. It feels so nice. That's why you're an actor. You know, you want to be. Uh, you you want your performances to be out there, of course. And now you don't seem to like trolls. Uh, why I'm saying this now is because पहले भी trolling तो हुई होगी. कोई न कोई चीज पर. और इस बार आपने बहुत ही करारा जवाब दिया है जो भी लोग कह रहे थे आपके बीच पर जो आपने गेन किया था मूवी के लिए दसवीं के लिए व्हाट वाज द फ्लैश पॉइंट दैट मेड यू थिंक दैट ओके नाउ आई मस्ट गिव इट बैक आई मस्ट राइट आउट आई मस्ट सेंड आउट अ मैसेज एक्चुअली विकी फॉर मी इट वाज सो मच एज being trolled about anything 
बिकॉज ट्रोलिंग आई थिंक जितना मुझे समझ में आता है वो वो होता है कि वेन यू आर पब्लिकली ऑन सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म वेदर इट्स इंस्टाग्राम और ट्विटर यू नो वेन यूर रेडिक्यूल फॉर समथिंग एंड यू नो वेन यूर काइंड ऑफ टारगेटेड फॉर समथिंग uh so that that is not what happened with me uh, by a long shot then that's not why i kind of opened myself up for that conversation it was an observation i had as a girl first and then as an actor uh that you know while i was putting the weight on for the part it was a very personal experience in day to day life so these are people in front of me they're not random people who are hiding behind laptops or Uh, phones or their devices and writing any nonsense and you know expecting a reaction or instigating someone for just for the sake of it you know uh these are people who from their end probably meant well and didn't do anything wrong you know uh from their end that's how they are this is how they think uh this is what their conditioning is and this is what they have been brought up to believe is okay to behave like कि आप किसी को भी कुछ भी बोल सकते हैं यू कैन कॉमेंट ऑन एनी बडीज बॉडी एट दी पॉइंट इंड टाइम यू कैन से वॉट यूर ईटिंग यू कैन से हाउ यूर लुकिंग इट्स ऑलमोस्ट लाइक हैविंग अ राइट टू टू एनी वन पर्सनल स्पेस एंड यू नो नॉट रियलाइजिंग द सेंटिटी ऑफ वॉट इज राइट टू से टू समबडी एंड वॉट इज नॉट राइट टू से टू सम वन जस्ट नॉट हैविंग दैट बेसिक कर्सी और बेसिक डिसेंसी एट सम टाइम्स यू नो so that this was a personal kind of an observation i had while i was in the process of preparing for the part and while i had put on the weight and i was visibly so much so so very different from what i normally am uh i knew that i'm going to come back to my normal self this wasn't something that was an unintentional um space that i was in you know this wasn't an unintentional circumstance i was in it was very intentional it was all thought through it was a decision that was made and i was going to finish my work and come back to my uh you know my my normal see right my my normal zone so i just at that time really this was now maybe a year and a half back i had thought at that time that you know once all of this is over i would like to talk about how it's not okay to just come up to somebody and make them feel conscious about how they're looking or what they're eating or it's not anybody else's business you know unless you have been given that right and unless you have been asked something unsolicited comments is what i had a problem with and i felt very sad and very very sorry for people who go through this on a daily basis who are born with unconventional bodies whether it's their skin color or their height or their frame or their features or it can be anything you know i think a lot of uh personal awareness has to be inculcated in all of us that conversation is all that i was interested in that don't just feel like you have the right to go and say anything to anybody because you have access to them you know yeah we are surrounded by people i would say of such kind we always uh, yeah comments are tum to alag lag rahe ho kya hua you lost weight yaar huh. ha are you okay ha huh. are you fine yeah 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 and then yeah. they'll tell you that yeah. you have really put on weight you must do something i have this dietitian number i have this one's number please go to this one please yeah. go to this one yeah and it just yeah. starts sure. from there it just starts from it there it starts from there it doesn't yeah. it's not that they have a conversation and then come to some uh, advice or whatever sure it's just that 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 door that people open on their own whether they are you know asked or not i think that's that is all that i was interested in making a point about that we all have to be uh, compassionate and genuinely cognizant of the fact that everybody has a circumstance they are probably going through and you may not know it because nobody walks with a memo you know um you have to just mind your own <laughs> business and just be careful of what you say because it can have a very deep in- impact on somebody see for me psychologically i wasn't going through anything heavy or something like that but even though i knew that i was doing this as an actor for a part i mean i'm this is my job it's a it's 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 what i'm getting paid for but even then i would come back home feeling a little bit odd that you know this 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 did affect me a little bit so imagine what it would do to someone who's actually living like this for the rest of their lives or who isn't able to fight what is 
whatever is going on with them and imagine them being on the receiving end of something like this day in and day out so that's that's all i wanted to just bring to the bring to the surface didn't you tell them there and then something from your side mm. you, can you say that or something not really it's not my nature to be confrontational maybe i should have i would come back home thinking i wish i had said this and i wish i had said that but i was more because you know it was a first for me i i too have not experienced something like this and it takes me a little time when some somebody has anything unpleasant to say i'm not the best person with uh, being able to come back with something right away some people are very good at it you know they know exactly what to say and they'll make light of the situation and they'll kind of you know find the right thing to say i'm not i would come back home and i i think about it and then i'd be like you know this is what i should have said or i could have said but i didn't want to stay quiet about this entire experience i had that is something that i again it's not in my nature to do something like this i'm very private and i don't like to uh discuss my personal thoughts but i felt responsible almost as an actor and somebody that maybe people will want to listen to you know and even if it makes a difference to one person somewhere i think it's worth it ye bhi zyada ho gaya hai hamare society mein hamare i mean world mein i think almost everywhere ke you have to be slim you have to be and especially especially in bollywood i think you have to be the perfect ten you have to be thin don't you feel so because i read so many no, actors not really saying mm. that they were rejected in auditions because the filmmaker said that you know you're fat you have put on too much weight i want a slimmer heroine isn't that happening in well your- i i don't know vicky see i have never met anyone who said that to me i have personally not gone through that um it pains me however to know that stuff like this happens that you know people are rejected on their body types or their skin color or they're all really parts of the same spectrum for me as far as i i think and look at it i don't think it's just the weight it's just everything you know it's the conventional definition of beauty and what is considered beauty so i have a problem with any and everyone who tries to box people in the name of a kind of a face or a kind of a body or a whatever else you need to look like um i don't think that is that is required firstly i don't think um actors connect with people beyond a point because of how they look you know it is an emotion you create it is a sentiment people feel um we have loved people over ages and uh, you know decades not because of how they look only you know mm, there is a big part of what the heart feels when they come on screen whether it's their charisma or their just their pure appeal you know um i know i know personally you know i have a i have a list of people that i love who are not considered conventionally beautiful or handsome or stunning or gorgeous or whatever uh but i think be- today more than ever before i definitely feel that the scene has changed a lot and so much such interesting content is being written such incredible stories are being told with all kinds of people and it's not just restricted to the female protagonist i think even the male protagonist is changing it's kind of coming back in a very interesting way to how things were back in the 70s you know some you you had very unconventional looking people who were leading films and you know they were accepted as film stars who are leading uh, actors mm. and and female actors you know i think things are actually changing for the better today today is a better time than any other time that has ever been for me i think okay so so back to daily life i hope those people have read your message whom you are hinting at i mean those who told you <laughs> has anybody called you and said ye mere liye tha kya no <laughs> i don't think they will and i don't want them to i don't i think it's for them to know and for them to make a note about and uh, the idea is not to embarrass anybody the idea is for them to just make a note and don't not to repeat what they what they did you know it's like that so it's not like i'll openly tell anyone anything it's not like i'll 
drop a name or i'll go and tell them that you know guess guess what <laughs> no i i think they know so <laughs> yeah so you said you were affected a little you were part of a little did you speak to anybody about this a yeah friend, of course i spoke to parent. my close friends about it absolutely yeah yeah i spoke to my close friends about it and and that is where the conversation actually you know uh, became important for me because you know i i didn't just think about it on my own i thought about i spoke about it out loud to my closest friends and uh, you know we made observations that you know we we really have to change as a society and as a mindset to somewhere understand that you know these kind of things they're not lost on people and uh you know i'm i'm in a place of privilege where i know that i'm going to be in a different place or i'm going to come back to my neutrality in a few months but what about people who who have to live like this so uh in fact it was out of these conversations that i got this the the impetus and the you know the kind of encouragement you need you know to make to put yourself out there for for something like this to be out there yeah but nimrat it's damn difficult to lose weight it's easy to gain were you sure that you will be able to you know get back to what you were ah uh, i i wasn't uh, thinking about that actually when i was putting the weight on there were days when i was like uh will i want to come back <laughs> because there was a time where i was enjoying being that way also you know because your body has a different flair and a flamboyance and i was enjoying playing bimla devi so much too you know uh of course you know my my dressing had to change my clothes wouldn't fit me and i had to get a completely new wardrobe from scratch um but then once i start stop it it actually just had to begin with the with the right nutrition you know and uh, then i then i started to tell myself that okay now you know these days are over and you have to come back to where you started and uh, it was a slow process because actually what happened was that there was a lockdown the second lockdown happened um just 3 days before my last days of work were left 3 days of work were left so i actually indefinitely had to kind of keep the weight for many months about 3 3 and a half months uh we finally finished shooting on the 10th of august i remember and there on i started losing the weight and then i injured my calf and then i was in a cast for a bit and it was just i was like okay i'm just meant to you know slow this whole thing down so i'm physically a very impatient person and it wasn't that easy for me to put the weight on as well it took me about 6 to 7 months luckily i had the time so i went about it in a proper way with you know a nutritionist uh, who was advising me every step of the way and things uh i wasn't afraid of 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 it but yes i was dreading the hard work that was coming my way <laughs> to come back to my uh, it's hard work you know like you have to um i can't like say that oh it happened in a, a, a you know in just a, uh, just overnight <laughs> no take us through that process how you put on the weight what you ate and how did you lose it i mean the kind of workouts you did and the kind of foods you stopped eating oh i ate everything actually you know i ate everything that we've grown up on i've grown up on i'm a north indian girl i i've come from punjab so i've grown up on parathe and uh, you know desi ghee and sweets and all kinds of lovely things so my mom actually used to make uh 15 25 parathe you know they used to make my mom in the house as a stack Hmm. और वो फ्रीज होके पैक होके दिल्ली से कुरियर होके आते थे सो वी फिगर्ड अ कुरियर सर्विस दैट वुड सेंड फूड सो शी यूज्ड टू सेंड मी प्रॉट हे एंड आई वुड हैव हैव दैट फॉर ब्रेकफास्ट लंच एंड डिनर मिनिमम टू डेजर्ट्स अ डे यू नो देसी घी के लड्डू एवरीथिंग यू नो मैंने अपने पूरे एक 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 पूरी लाइफ टाइम की मैंने अपने ड्रीम्स और यू नो विद फूड व्हाटएवर फैंटेसीज आई हैड आई लिव देम so i had a really good time eating all those lovely things um nutritionally of course i had to be very sure that you know i'm eating the right kind of things so i was advised very well by a nutritionist called janvi kanakia and uh, she was appointed by uh, mad doc films you know so she was with me every step of the way and every week we used to do a weight check and we used to do like a uh you know just like nutritionally what are we doing where are we at 
I used to lose my sleep sometimes, you know, because at my height to put on about 15, 16 kilos is a lot of weight. I'm not mm. a very tall person. I'm an average height person. So for my height, it was, it was a lot more mass for the bones to carry, for my structure to carry. So it had an impact on my joints and things. And, you know, so I had to be extra careful. I think that's probably why I ended up injuring myself also. Because I had started to, in my mind, you know, my workout capacities were very different from what they were in my current body. You know, mentally, you you have a very different muscle memory. And when I started to work out, then I realized that, oh, I need, really need to be careful. You need to, you need to be sure, I was slow and sure. So functional training is what I did eventually. I used to do yoga quite seriously. And, you know, I used to uh, keep that going very, very uh, consistently so yoga and functional training and walks that was something that you know a combination of these things because I believe uh, I really believe in weight training and I uh, I don't think that is something that one can cut corners with Um, so yeah I I did a combination of all of this uh, and otherwise just my just made sure that you know my calorie intake was looked after because that is something that you can't have a high calorie diet when you're trying to put lose weight it's just the reverse of when you're trying to put the weight on you went yeah. for walks where people didn't run after you <laughs> no <laughs> well uh, the days i was going for walks uh, you know those days we, we used to have to wear masks now we don't have to anymore uh, so i haven't been also it's very hot so i haven't been out for walks um, but uh, you can get away with with masks you know the advantage of of that is such. Thank you, Nimran. Thank you so much for this lovely conversation. Such an inspiring conversation. And wish Thank to you see more in Bollywood and wish to have Thank more you. interviews with you. Thank you so much, Nimran. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Vicky. It's really, really lovely. Thank you.